Income tax 2023-2024. Employment taxes, tax software example. Get ready and some coffee because we're setting our refund to the max with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problem using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to it, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Standard starting point. Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang tax man. Living in Beverly Hills, 90210, single filer, no dependents. We're going to start off with W-2 income, which we will shortly change to Schedule C, sole proprietorship income, 100000 We've got the 13850 standard deduction getting to the taxable income, 86150 which we can mirror in our income tax formula. 100,000 minus the 13,850 gets us to the 86,150. The calculation of the tax, 14,266, calculated by the software page number two, 14,266. Okay, let's go back to the page number one. We're now going to be focusing in on converting from W-2 income to Schedule C income. Now thinking about what if we have employees. This can be a little bit of a confusing topic because of the confusion between the self-employment taxes and the payroll taxes, both of them being Social Security and Medicare. However, the self-employment tax is going to be based on our self-employment income, typically the bottom line of the Schedule C, whereas the payroll taxes are something that we have to process if we have to process payroll, which for a Schedule C kind of uh, business will only happen if we hire other people. Right, so let's give a general recap of this. If I go to the to the first tab here, and if we were a W-2 employee, you will recall that we will have wages, and then let's imagine that we were the employee of a separate legal entity like a C corporation, a normal type of corporation, then they would be responsible for withholding for us the 6,200, which is 6.2% of the wages for the social security, the 1.45 for the Medicare and the withholding for federal income taxes that would be reported on the W-2. Remember that they would also have to be reporting their half of it, paying 6,200 in this case on their side that wouldn't be reported on our W-2 because in theory doesn't come out of our paycheck, but rather is paid on their side and the 1,450 on their side. Now, if we convert this to a Schedule C, as we saw before when we focused on the self-employment, let's do that now. I'm gonna say delete and say, okay. And we're gonna go back and then say D -d income on the Schedule C. And let's just do the same scenario we did last time, 120,000 income. We have the expenses of 20,000. So now we get to deduct the expenses, but we know that on the Schedule C now, we have the 120 minus the 20 gives us to that 100,000 again. So in this case, remember that for us, uh, we, we don't have just the federal income taxes that we now have to calculate because the government wants to say, no, you also have to pay us the Social Security and Medicare. It's like, well, I don't have any employees. 
government says, well, you are the employee of the business. That's how we're going to treat you as both the employee and the employer. Therefore, as we saw last time, this 100,000 is what's pulling into the, not there, the schedule SE, where we calculate both the employee and employer portion, the 14, 290, 192 uh, reported on page two as another tax, and then half of that is deductible. So I won't go into that in detail because we saw it last time, but on page two, there's the added tax that we that we have to actually include on the form 1040. There's our, our income tax up top. So let's go back to the Schedule C. Now, remember that that doesn't mean that we don't have employees ourselves. So what if we wanted to hire uh, employees? Well, then we have to deal with payroll just like anyone else would basically have to deal with payroll. The only difference here being that, that in our case, we're not going to be putting ourselves on the payroll as a W-2 employee, as would be the case if you were like a CEO or a high level executive at a corporation. In that case, everybody is an employee because it's a separate legal entity and the owner, the owners are the shareholders, right? So, so anyone that works for the business would basically get a W-2 in that case and deal with payroll. In our case, we're only going to deal with payroll if we hire other people, and in which case we have to be processing the payroll for them and still result in an income statement resulting in net income. And the net income is what we're going to have to be paying the our portion of self-employment tax, which is kind of like uh, the payroll taxes that we're basically paying to us as we're considered like the executives of the of the sole proprietorship as well as the owner so we're paying both employee and employer portion is the general idea so that means uh with general payroll remember the idea here with payroll if you're a tax preparer the question is do you want to be taking on business tax returns at all if because they're much more complex and if you do do you want to restrict the types of tax returns that you have to like simple schedule C's to a particular industry or so on and so forth? And then do you want to be focusing in on just one type of business entity, such as a schedule C versus flow through entities like S corporations and LLCs, or even take on uh, C corporations, partnerships, and uh, how complex do you want to be dealing with now the other question as well is it used to be that cpa firms and and accounting firms did taxes bookkeeping and payroll but a lot of these have become specialty areas in and of themselves so are we someone that wants to be taking on the bookkeeping as well as the payroll as well as uh the taxes or possibly we just want to do the taxes and network with other people to process the payroll, which might be a bookkeeper using software to help them with payroll, which will be an added cost to the client. No matter what, payroll is always going to be an added cost because it's become quite complex. Or, and or, do we want to have a bookkeeper that we network with or bookkeepers that we network with and payroll providers that we network with who specialize just in payroll? Because uh, oftentimes the CPA firms, for example, oftentimes are going more towards tax preparation and tax planning as well as audit because there's higher profit margins and the bookkeeping and the payroll, although there's money to be made there, is becoming more specialized. So it's more difficult to be a generalist and take all of those things on. So sometimes you have some kind of some type of networking uh, system that's going to be put in place. So just a quick overview on uh, the payroll. Note that what payroll involves is that you're going to have to be dealing with the payroll. When you hire someone, the, the, the question is, is going to be, if I need help, can I hire them as a contractor or do I have to do payroll? Do I have to process them as payroll? If you are going to be dealing with their day-to-day -day activities, the IRS is going to lean towards wanting them to be an employee employer relationship to force you to have to process payroll so that you're responsible for doing the withholdings and all that kind of stuff if you want to hire them as a contractor you want to make sure that you delineate why they're a contractor and why you don't have to include them as 
an employee and therefore don't have to issue them a W-2 and withhold and so on and so forth. So if they are an employee, then you determine how often you want to pay them weekly, semi-weekly, uh, bi-weekly or, or, uh, or monthly, for example. And then every quarter, typically, uh, depending on how much wages you have to report the 941. So then you have to deal with the reporting of the 941s, which are going to basically summarize in a similar way as the Form 1040 summarizes the federal income taxes for the year. The 941s summarize the payroll taxes, which include the Social Security federal income taxes for the employees, not yours for the business, not for your 1040, but for the employees and the Medicare, right? It summarizes that on a quarterly basis would be the general idea. And then at the end of the year, you also have the 940, which is going to be summarizing the FUTA, which is the employer only tax that you're going to basically have to deal with. And then, of course, you have to process the W-2s and the W-3s, providing those not only to the employees, but also to the government uh, so that you can basic. So you have to process those as well. Now, that becomes a significant amount of work. You're going to end up paying for that or the client will no matter what happens, right? So one way to happen is they might have their software, like a QuickBooks, for example, that could help them to generate these forms. But the QuickBooks software will, of course, add an added fee for processing the payroll. So you're going to pay for it possibly through the software, but you could get some support with that. Many other popular softwares have some kind of internal or add-on that can help to process uh, the payroll. And then you also might say, well, I'm going to try to have someone external do the payroll, working with external payroll providers, which might be like an ADP or a Paychex. These are just the large ones. There's many of them, but they are going to specialize just in payroll. And these guys could integrate with software or possibly you try to keep the bookkeeper separate and have the bookkeeper basically on a cash based system using like bank feeds, for example. And you also have clients using a third party payroll provider that you trust. And then when they give us the information for the tax preparation, we can gather all this information together, including the bookkeeping, which gives us the income statement so that we can put that into the Schedule C, the ADP reports, including the 941s, the 940, and the W-2s, which we can use to make any adjusting entries that are period end adjusting entries. So if you want, so again, this gets into technical stuff, how much bookkeeping and adjusting entries do we want to take on? But the idea is going to be that these reports, the, the W-2s and the 941s are going to be reported to the government as well as your federal income tax returns. So you should then have, you should be able to reconcile exactly what is reported in terms of wages on like the W-2 to what you reported as a deduction on the tax return. If, on the, if you have something vastly different reported as wages on the tax return than was reported on the quarterly 941s and the yearly 940 and W-2, W-3, then you can see the IRS might question that, of course. So you want to kind of reconcile, make sure that those things are reconciled. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind here, when we report things here, the wages area uh, includes typically the, the taxes paid by the employee. So in other words, if, if we compare this to like the W-2, this, this W-3 represents like all W-2s as if all of your employees, if you had five employees, the W-3 would kind of represent as if all employees were one employee. Box one being all the wages for federal income taxes reported to all five employees on one W-3, right? So you've got the, the wages and then the federal income taxes would be all of the taxes that were paid. These federal income taxes, although you took them as the employer from your employee by not paying them to the employee, withholding them, and then paying them to the government, these are not payroll taxes reported from a bookkeeping standpoint on our side, really, because the idea is that they are part of wages. 
They are part of the earnings of the employee. We just had to allocate their earnings to the government on their behalf. Same with Social Security. The Social Security that's reported on the W-2s and W-3 is not our Social Security. They're not payroll taxes to us. We just are the ones that had to pay that money on behalf of the employees. We took it from the employees and paid it directly to the government on their behalf. Now, we had to pay our portion of the Social Security and Medicare, which we can see on the 941s, the difference between the 941s and the 940. Our portion, which matches, meaning if we doubled the Social Security and Medicare typically, then that's what we had to pay over and above. So that's what we paid in terms of payroll uh, taxes. So when you're trying to match this stuff up to what was reported on the tax return, what you should have here you would think then is wages that basically tie into the 941s and, and, and 940, which gets a little bit tricky when you get into like things that are deductible for federal income taxes, like 401k plans and that kind of stuff. But in essence, total wages are going to be here. You also are going to have reports if you have ADP or paychecks that kind of breaks this stuff out too, that might be useful. But then you would expect then the taxes to be payroll taxes, which would just be the employer payroll taxes, which would be our portion of Social Security, Medicare, and the FUTA, Federal Unemployment Tax, which is kind of our portion. So you can kind of check those. So if I so 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 if we went back into our our data input, we would expect if we had employees to have something in the wages, let's say the wages were twelve thousand, and then let's say the payroll taxes uh, were, were 3000. If I saw that on the W2s and I was I'm on the, on the, on the, on the income statement that I then put into the tax return, again, I might want to ask for the 941s and the 940s if I want to be thorough and see, does that tie into the wages that were paid to the employees? Does this tie into the employer portion of the payroll taxes? Because again, if not, then the IRS has that information. And if the two things don't coincide, 941s, W2s, and what is reported here, you could see that could cause a problem, of course. Notice that we still result in net income of 85,000 here. Because, and that means that our, we didn't pay ourselves in this case, as we would if we were an executor of a corporation, like a C corporation or even a flow through entity, like an S corporation, we might end up you know, paying ourselves. In this case, we don't. The net income is calculated still as self-employment tax, which now again, of course, we would then be reporting on the schedule SE. Now we're down to 85,000 which we will then calculate as if it was our income similar to the self to, to, to wages where we're going to pay Social Security, Med Medicare, both the employer and employee portion. And of course, we're going to pay the federal income taxes, which is what we usually think of calculating on uh, the Form 1040.